Happy New Year. Happy 2017. We made another another year in the books. I hope that 2016 uh, was a successful year for you, meaning that you did some artwork that you were proud of, maybe some drawings, tried a new medium, or even pushed your medium to a higher level. So today I want to talk about something that all we artists, especially in the real world, have to deal with. And that is how do you find time to create the work? Believe me, I know. I have a full-time job, traveling back and forth, food shopping. Before you know it, you're too tired at the end of the day to paint or draw. I read this book by Tony Robbins, I think Awaken the Giant Within, or one of his books. and. The concept he basically uh, talked about was immovable blocks of time. Immovable blocks of time is something that I have tried to use and actually very successfully, might I add. The concept is if you can take a block of time every day that is just yours, meaning there will be no interruptions, there will be uh, no phone calls, no other pressing engagements. A lot of times the immovable blocks of time are the morning hours before you have to get up in the morning. For me, I do it every hour, actually one hour before I have to go to work every day. And I dedicate that just to painting. Now at first I was like, oh my God, how am I going to wake up? I'm going to be tired throughout the day. But in reality, it invigorated me. It gave me a start of my day where I felt like I was pushing myself towards the important goals. Not just going to work and doing a nine to five, but something that is going to help me in my career, my life as an artist. You moms out there, I know it's not easy. And I admire you girls so much, believe me. Let's say you get up just 15 minutes a day before everything begins, before you have to get the kids ready for school, before you have to get ready for work, let's say 15 minutes a day. Maybe you don't even get to work on your painting. Maybe just take your sketchbook out and sketch or, or read this art book that you wanted to get to, but you never find the time. So 15 minutes a day, let's say you just do it five days a week. So that equals an hour and a half. Hour and a half a week isn't that much. But let's say you do that for the whole month. That's actually five hours. Just for the month of those, those 15 minutes. Let's say a year. That is 60 hours, if my calculations are correct. 60 hours dedicated to your art. Let's say at the end of 2017, wouldn't it be nice to just say, I'm going to take a week and a half just to work on my artwork. Well, with the 15 minutes a day, you will have that week and a half. I also feel that if you do consistent energy, uh, consistent work towards your goals, even if it's just 15 minutes, it's far more effective than if you did a three hour session on a Sunday or even an eight hour session uh, during the weekend. With the 15 minutes, 15 minutes a day it is consistent. After the 15 minutes are over, you're still thinking about your art. You're creatively problem solving when you're away from your easel. So I really feel if we all adopt this immovable blocks of time as an artist, as artists, it will help us immensely. So I want to hear your thoughts, what you think, and share perhaps uh, how it worked for you or if you tried it in the past. Thanks. And so I also have in this video a project that I'm working on which is Airbrush with India Ink and Pastel on a Canson board. I really liked the way that these mediums work together to create this smoky, uh, out of focus, in focus reality. And I'm going to go over the materials that I use and maybe you can try it yourself. Anyway, uh, please like and subscribe. That helps me and I want to do a video a week. 
every every week on a Sunday I want to post a video. I want to be consistent. I want to help you guys and I want to hear from you guys and I want you guys to inspire me as well. Take care. Bye-bye. Working on the airbrush uh, element of this piece and you can see how the airbrush with India ink helps create the same exact look as if I was working either in graphite or oil pastel. I like using these freehand shields to get these wonderful hard edges. They really, they really make a difference and the way that these edges are, are crisp, you cannot do that with any other means. So working with both the uh, airbrush, these, these freehand shields, the pastel really creates a wonderful contrast and more of a reality than I can see doing it either in oil airbrush or oil pastel. I'm using this new Canson artboard, which basically is Canson paper, I guess uh, adhered to an illustration board. And I'll tell you, one of the things that really drew me to this is that it accepts pastel. I think a thin piece of Canson paper uh, would not work. The paper would start to warp, and, and I think it would just be a mess. But the fact that this Canson paper is mounted on the illustration board lets me go ahead and lay in the ink without fear of warping. I mean, it's like the best of both worlds because you have the ability to apply the India ink with the airbrush, and then the Canson also takes pastel beautifully. So, uh, so far, I'm very happy with the results of my experiment. As you can see, with the airbrush, there's subtleties that are unable to achieve in other mediums. Yes, you can achieve them, but not with such ease. I tell you, it is uh, beautiful to work with airbrush and pastel. They almost uh, are meant to be together. The airbrush I'm using is an Iwata Custom Micron. Uh, it's the C+. Uh, the Iwatas are probably the best airbrushes on the market, I would venture to say. I've only used Iwatas, so I really, uh, really can uh, give you an educated view on it, except that all the top airbrush artists in the industry, they all profess that uh, Iwatas are the best, and I believe them. Right now I want to show you, as I'm finishing up here with the airbrush at this stage, uh, moving on to the pastel and how the pastels 
work with the airbrush to create wonderful luminosity or luminous qualities in the skin. You'll notice that the skin basically uh, when they are lights in the area it's not just this uh, solid value or color it is a uh, interplay with the surface. You'll see here that I also create texture by uh, using this wonderful uh, mono eraser. It's almost like a like a mechanical pencil. Uh, it you know runs out. You just press the button like a mechanical pencil, and you get this sharp point. Uh, you'll notice that uh, the light on the form, the nose, the eyelids, it's much like snow on a mountain or a hill. It's more concentrated at the peaks, and then it dissipates as it uh, moves away from the peaks. I really love it. I really love the way light uh, bounces off of human skin. And the more I paint and draw, the more I observe, the more I see that uh, light is more of a reaction than a value. It's pretty amazing. I don't like the word texture as much as I would want the student to really pay attention to how light reacts. It's not so much the surface, but the light that's reacting. So if you think about it that way, you can see that the light reacts a certain way on a shiny subject, on a shiny object, uh, smooth. It reacts a certain way on a rough object, such as uh, the skin or sand. I think if we concentrate on the light and not so much of what we're painting, then we could look at it in a more objective way and actually create paintings that have greater depth of observation. I, the word realism, I don't know, it's uh, I, I just think uh, a better reaction to what is happening, a better understanding of the world around us. I mean, how real can a, a two-dimensional picture or uh, using pastel and airbrush and ink, you know, how real is that? So maybe the word realism is, is not the right word. Maybe the word understanding. That sounds a little bit better. Also, uh, right now I'm going to move over to the hair and show you with this technique. I'm going to go back in with pastel for the hair. But uh, I find that when you do the pastel over a dark area, it gets a little blue. So here's a little tip. Sometimes you got to add a little orange, even in pastel, to combat any kind of blue shift that might happen. Uh, it is a phenomenon when uh, a darker color is covered with a lighter color, there's a blue shift. So I find this uh, also prevalent in pastel. You'll see here I'm actually applying the pastel and then I'm going to go back over it again with the uh, ink and airbrush. Uh, to help create that uh, wonderful texture of hair. Uh, but going back to the light, it's not so much the texture of the hair as much as how the light is uh, reacting to the surface, how it's bouncing off of it, reflecting and reflect, refracting. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, there's going to be many more. And if you have any questions or comments, please uh, let me know. I hope you guys had a great weekend and uh, talk to you next week. Please uh, leave a comment or questions. Take care.